Hey, good morning to you. God bless you this morning. I could sit here and just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, and we'd never have church. You know what I mean? If you're outside, come on in the house. Come on in the house. If you're outside, come on and have church with us. Amen? No better way to get them in than getting up. Let's get up. Let's get up on our feet. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a big room, 1,200 seats in this room, so you can see empty seats if you want to look at the empty ones. But what I do is I look at the ones with the people in them. And I tell you what, if we'd have had the first crowd in with this crowd, this place would be full today. But we choose to have two services because I like the different times. That's great for people, and we have to have it during the other times of the year. But I'm just really proud of y'all. I'm just proud of you. I mean, our world seems to be going to hell. But I'm, it's glad, I'm glad to see that some folks are going to church. You know what I mean? And all we can do is represent where we are. But it's a good crowd right here in the middle of Rotunda. You had to drive to get here. A lot of people don't even know we exist down here in the middle somewhere. But anyway, it's good to see you, both of you. And I've been missing you, buddy. I've been missing you. I've been thinking of you. So I owe you lunch. You can, you can, dra you can drag her along. All right, I'd be happy to have both of you, okay? Hey, I was away last week. Can we thank the Lord for both Kyle and Adam that spoke last weekend? They did great. I tell you what, and last month I had Chris and Joel, I mean, to have a church where strong, young, adult men can get up and deliver the word of the living God, that's a powerful, that's a great ministry. Just makes me feel good as an old man. You hear me? And uh, I just love that. I love sharing. I love sharing with y'all. And uh, what a blessing. You're, are you ready for some good music or not? You ready for some good music today? I listened last week. Internet was down, and I'm up there at McDonald's like I'm doing, ready for church. Come on, baby. Got my, got my muffin, got everything. I'm good. And the Internet don't work. So I'm the type of person, when I get down, you know what I do when I get down? Take a wild guess. I eat oh yes i ate another biscuit i did i don't have the services or nothing but i was able to listen later they got them up later the next day i listened to the band oh my gosh i'm thinking what a band we have you know but then i've been thinking this they they, they sing the good songs when i'm not here that's what i thought i'm getting gypped i'm getting gypped until i heard the, the songs this morning and you're not getting gypped today, baby. You got some great music coming. Are y'all ready? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's have church this morning. Woo! Amen. If it's your first time I'm Pastor Gary, I'm the guy that's got the tent on today. Large shirt, isn't it? Yes, yes. Makes me feel skinny, this shirt. I feel fantastic. Anyway, let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. Come on. Don't give up on your country. Don't give up, baby. Let's go. Come on. Woo! Let's have church. Go get them. One of my favorite songs. It's an old prophecy song. Listen to it. Come on. Here we go.
How about a great song, huh? Come on. That one's been around a while. I love that. We're going to take you down, uh, down a mountain road now, an old mountain song. And uh, it's a country gospel song from back in the day. It's called Farther Along. Farther Along. We'll know all about it. A lot of perplexing things today. A lot of, a lot of how, how can that happen? Life does that to you sometimes. Kicks you right in the teeth. And yet somebody else skates by. This song addresses that. It's a very unusual song, one I've always loved. And Mitch pulled out a flannel shirt just for this song. Yeah, amen. There you go. Mountain shirt. Here we go. Here we go. Farther along. Let's sing it, church. A lot of you will know it. If not, you'll learn it pretty quick. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on. Tempted and tried. Come on, church. Oft made to wonder. Come on. Why it should be this all the day long. While there are others living about us. If church farther now. Come on. Come on. Come on, son. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall Fire. 
farther along we'll understand why cheer up my sister and live in the sunshine we'll understand it all by and by what a great old mountain song some of y'all like i don't know about all that kind of singing anyway i like that i like that it's a truth isn't it how many ever had you got serious questions? You, when you get to heaven, you're going to want to see if you can't get them answered. Amen. Say, mess happened in your life. Come on. Good stuff. Good song for our heart. Glad you're here today. Pretty good looking crowd. It looks bigger when you're standing up. Thank you. Yeah. People meet me. They met me today like, you're big. How about you shut up, okay? I mean, that's not a compliment. All right. Come on. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. If it's your first time, welcome. You get to be you. I'm going to be me. And uh, that's what God wants. He wants, to, he wants to meet you where you are today and meet me where I am. And both of us, I'm not better than you, but you're not better than me. Truth of the matter, you're screwed up, I'm screwed up. And we need the Lord. We need help. We need Him. Amen? And that's what we do here. We want to preach Jesus. I got a crazy message very rarely you'll ever hear a message like you're hearing today. It's solely, exclusively today on the study of the Antichrist. And you'll see it coming in just a bit. It's a study on prophecy. I'm in a series right now. But we want you to better understand what the Bible says. And it's not cuckoo land. Okay? So I'd like to. I might be crazy, but the Word ain't crazy. So we're going to get into it in just a bit. I think it'll be, if it goes anything like the first service, just pray for me because I'm out of gas. I gave a lot of gas at other service. I was like, ah. So we'll see. See if I can pull it off. Amen? Come on. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you because you love us. We fall at your feet. You're God. We're not. You don't need anything. and We need everything. But we have it in you. Lord, we need you desperately. Need you in our world. Need you in our country. Need you in our home. Need you in our heart. Lord, we ask for your help today. Would you help someone today, Lord, that's hurting? Would you use our hands today, our eyes, our touch, our words, to help somebody? Lord, I pray for lost people today. They're here. They're watching online. They're listening on the radio. Lord, they don't know if they die, when, and where they're going. Lord, I pray none will leave lost. I pray that every one of us will take advantage of the wonderful opportunity of grace that you love us. You gave your life for us on a cross. You want to save us. You don't, you're not willing that any of us perish. You care for us. Lord, I pray we'll see that. Help us come to our senses today and put our faith in you. Oh, God, help us, we pray. We don't want to have church without you, Lord. Be in our midst, we pray. Touch our heart, we pray. Holy Spirit, the living God, put your red-hot finger on something in my life and something in these people's lives that need to be corrected. We need to be closer to you. Help us, Lord, to do right. You want to help us do that today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Thank you much. Mr. Alexander Christie, I did it in the first service. Can we thank the Lord for this guy right here? Come on, right there. Amen. Does such a great job when I'm away and I can watch how he does and how he talks and how he runs the service. And over the years, it's just gotten better and better and better and better and better and better. And I tell you what, it's a real comfort to me. It's a comfort to me to have him, to have all the team here that serve. It's good for me to get away where I can look back and just see online and watch everybody doing everything. And it humbles me. It makes me feel more grateful that I go to church here. Amen? So I appreciate you, buddy boy. We love you, man. Amen. Go get them. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you for your trust and being patient during the early years of not being able to finish the sentence on stage. So thank you for that, Pastor. Appreciate it, sir. And, of course, I can't do it. I mean, you all were here, were here last week, the band, speakers, everything was fantastic. What a great, great uh, Sunday we had last week. You all are in for a treat this morning, though, with this Antichrist talk. <clears throat> talk, see, I can't speak in sentences again. Um, 
it's just a great, great service. So you're, you're in for a treat this morning. But if today's your first time here, please do us a favor and fill out the guest registry that's in your, uh, on your worship guide that you got when you walked in the door this morning. Or you can go on out to the Welcome Center after the service, and they'll give you a little gift bag, uh, the little card to fill out, the same basic info. We promise not to bother you. We just want to send you a note of thanks for being here this morning. We know you could be anywhere and we, you chose to come to Fellowship Church. So we want to thank you for that. And also we want to send you a postcard whenever a big event is going on here. And that's about it. We promise not to bother you much at all. Good morning, everyone watching online. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. No matter where you are in the world, you can send us a Facebook message or an email, and we will do the same exact thing for you. Uh, tomorrow is a reminder uh, for the uh, men's Bible study starting at 6.30 tomorrow. We'd love for you guys to come. To, if you already got your book, you're all signed up and ready to go, come on out tomorrow at 6.30 to get uh, a fresh start on living out the overflow. There's a great study that uh, Ronnie and his group of guys are going to be working on. So that starts tomorrow at 6.30. Prayer, uh, a woman's Bible study, it's going to be every other Thursday. It's beginning this Thursday Right here at the church, ladies, I encourage you to come on out. It's going to be a great study in God's word every other Thursday. So you just got to mark your calendar, but you don't have to be here every week. You can break it up a little bit and be here every other week. So it's not as big of a commitment. We would love for you to be a part of this. Make some new friends here at the church. And, of course, getting into God's word is an awesome, awesome thing. We've got other Bible studies going on here. Uh, this list is going to be getting bigger here in the next few weeks. We're so excited to, to have what we have going on, though. We encourage you to plug into them. Check them out. They're in your worship guide. If you have any questions, just give us a call at the office, please. Friend to Friend is every Tuesday right here at Fellowship Church. For you or anyone who wants to make some new friends here at the church, they play board games together. This is a great, great time in the afternoon of fellowship, getting into God's word a little bit and developing those awesome church relationships. So please come on out on a Tuesday. Every Wednesday, except for this Wednesday, they're going to take this Wednesday off because Grief Share uh, is on Wednesday nights at the beginning of Fellowship Recovery. That begins at 4 o'clock here. But for next week, if you or anyone you know that's going through that profound loss of a loved one, come on out on a Wednesday. But the reason why they're not going to be here is we have a huge event coming up this Wednesday. Not Sunday, not Saturday, but this Wednesday coming up, we encourage you all to come on out to Englewood Beach for an awesome cookout. We're going to be doing hamburgers, hot dogs, fresh Italian sausage, peppers, onions. We would love for you to please bring a side dish that day. Uh, we'll be providing all the main stuff as well as the dessert. But we would and watermelon, pastor's favorite, watermelon. We get to serve watermelon. I saw a video of a guy dumping lemon juice on top of watermelon, and he acted like it was the best thing on earth. Yeah, it's worth a try. Maybe we'll get some lemons. So we'll try some lemons. But anyway, come on out on Wednesday. It's going to be a great time. It's all for free. Uh, we just want you all to come out, invite your neighbor, let them know that church folks aren't all crazy people. You know, we're just normal people having fun at the beach. And then maybe they can take part and watch the baptism that takes place after the cookout. We have over 20 three, 24 people, if not more people signed up for the baptism on, the, on Wednesday. So if you've not followed the Lord and believer's baptism and you're just not, you're kind of worried about doing it by yourself in front of a group of people, this is a great chance for you to do it with a big crowd of folks. They're going to love you. They're going to support you. They're going to encourage you to do this. Plus it's a command. The Lord commanded after you get saved, after you put Christ in your heart, you get baptized. So follow his commandment. Do that. It's a public way to show that you're putting up a fight against the devil in your life. It's your way of taking a stand. And we just would really, really love for you to do that. There's an incredible couple in our church that's going to make you a necklace. That's going to be a free gift for you that day. And also we're going to give you a towel from Fellowship Church. But we just want you to sign up for this baptism so we have enough stuff for it uh, for you, the little, all that stuff I was just talking about. But please, please sign up on your way out today and take part in this baptism. You'll never, ever forget getting baptized in the Gulf of Mexico. Women's Prayer Breakfast is coming up on Saturday also. We've got a busy, busy week here at Fellowship Church. And ladies, if you haven't signed up, please do sign up on your way out so we have enough food for everybody. It's going to be an awesome Bible study. It starts at 9 a.m. and it's over by 10. You'll have the rest of your day. Please come on out and make some new friends at the church. And this is something I'm really excited about. I've been wanting to do this for a while. My schedule gets a little crazy, so it's hard for me to line up five days in a row uh, during, you know, in consecutive order. But it's, uh, it's a study of where we're going to give you a Bible for free. The whole class is for free. But we want you to come on out and get a love for God's Word. To, to have a Bible in your hand, you may own a Bible, but we're going to give you one anyway. And we're going to go through what all the numbers mean, what those notes on the bottom mean, all the little different details that are put in Scriptures to make it easier for you to understand stuff. 
And the more you understand stuff and the more excited you can get about it, the more hungry for God's word you're going to be. And that's the whole purpose behind this class. Why is the Old Testament the Old Testament and the New Testament the New Testament? We're going to help you out with that. So please, if you do us a favor, sign up on your way out today. It's only five weeks long, and it's going to be something that you'll enjoy. I, I've done it twice. I learned something both times. And uh, Pete and Joan King started this 20-plus years ago here at Fellowship Church. And they've done so, so many of them. And they did such an amazing job. And they've entrusted me to, to kind of carry it on for them. And we just would love for you to take part and be a part of the legacy of this class. It's going to be an awesome thing. Please sign up today. And, of course, Pastor Gary's on the radio nearly every day of the week, right on 91.3 WSCB on the FM. We'd love you to listen. Lots of great preachers on that station as well. And you can support local Christian radio because lots of folks, you'd be surprised how many people find the Lord through this radio station. And, of course, this is our town. Thank you so much for wearing those shirts, putting the hats on your head. Uh, I see the magnets and the bumper stickers all over town. We thank you for doing that. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider it. It does point people here to Fellowship Church. And if you don't have the cash, we'll give you all that stuff for free. We just want you to wear it. So, please, it's right there out there in the foyer. And give2fc.com, a really easy way to give. Because of your generous giving, I can say what I said in the last one and not sweat about it. I can say we can give you a T-shirt and not worry about how we're going to make ends meet because we're a debt-free ministry because of you. So, again, if you have not checked out give2fc.com, it's a really easy way to give online. And, of course, all you folks up north still sending stuff to that P.O. box, we thank you so much for your notes of encouragement and many of you that that do still give in that P.O. box. We thank you very, very much. We love and appreciate you all. Have an amazing day. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's a lot of stuff, isn't it? Say, Ooh, man. And I don't do it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the one that teaches the Bible study classes. We've got so many wonderful, just like over the last couple of months, we had four young men preach God's word in this church, but we've also got on a regular basis, uh, men and women are leading Bible studies, and they do a great job. They're committed, and they're not crazy. And if they don't know something, they'll discuss it with you that they don't know it. They're not trying to add an agenda that they're trying to shove down your throat. You hear me? We want to learn. want to grow together. Well, we love you guys. And uh, can we just tell them we appreciate it one more time right here, this band. Amen. And Sherry, what's coming our way? We have a song called I Will Carry You, and uh, I was saying last service, I was going through my testimony and just refining it and picking pieces of it and reminding myself of it because how easily we forget forget even our own stories. (laughs) But I was just looking at all of the pieces and all of the tiny things where God was, he was holding me. He carried me through even when I was running from him, even when I was hiding from him, even when I didn't want to acknowledge that he was there or know that he was there. He was the reason that I made it through. And I do forget. I forget his faithfulness. And his faithfulness is so, so on time, in perfect time, every time. He does it every time. And yet I look back on my story. I see him doing it every time. And I still question whether he's going to do it again. But these songs, these next two songs are written from the perspective of the Lord speaking to us. And it's just so beautiful to hear these words and to know that he feels that way. He's holding each and every one of us in the palm of his hand. He has a good plan for you. He has a good plan for me. He's going to use everything that we're walking through that's challenging, that's a trial, that's hard. He's going to work it for his glory and our good.
Is that an incredible song this morning? Come on. I heard it the first hour. I loved it. Jump on up on your feet with me one last time this morning. Amen. Come on. Get up. Get up. You say, I can't get up. If you can get up, get up. If you can't get up, you can't get up. But if you can get up and don't get up, then maybe you won't ever get up. No, I'm just kidding. You just take care of you. That's okay, guys. Amen. One last song this morning. I'd like to just go right into it. It's a beautiful song. And as Sherry said, it's uh, that song, I'll Carry You. Jesus said in John 10, he said that nobody can pluck you from my hand. And that's, I, I've just, I love that. I love that. And I look at us as we're not in just standing in his hand. We're in his hand. We are in Christ. We are in Christ. Nobody can pluck you out of that hand because nobody can get to you. He's got you covered. But then he said this wonderful thing to his disciples, if we just to us. He told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I love this song. It's one that we do at special events. And I just love it. I'm glad you picked it today. Thank you. See my hands and look at my feet. It's okay if it's hard to believe. I have faith that you will do greater things. It's my time to go, but 
That song was written for her to sing it, man. That is you. That is you. Thank you so much, man. Did you enjoy the worship today? One more time. Did you enjoy worshiping today? Come on. Man. Remain standing. Now, son, I'm not going to pick on you, but how old were you on your birthday? How old were you on your birthday? How many? 17. When is your birthday? May what? You know what that day is? That's my birthday. <laughs> Ever since he was a little boy, we have talked about that. We actually went out a few times to eat. Was that correct? On our birthday. Amen. I owe you uh, like three of them. <laughs> Do what? You think it's more than that? <laughs> All right. Well, come on. You are praying. Come on. You are praying. Get up here. Run in your mouth like that to me. <laughs> Run in your mouth. If you can talk back to the pastor, you can pray. Amen. I love it. You play ball. You've been going over and doing mechanical work. Is that correct? Dude, college, like a pre. What course did you do? Uh, automotive. Did you learn anything? Not really. Can you change my oil? Yeah. You know how to change oil? Yeah. 30 South Oxford. All right. Thank you. Do you remember when you were a little boy, I had you come to the house and you worked like a slave moving those stones? You remember that? How did that feel? It was, it was all right. Was it brutal? Yes. You survived. Be quiet. <laughs> I've known him for a long time. Amen. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work today. Amen. Aren't you glad I don't pick on you like this? 
Amen. Yeah, it's awful, ain't it? But thank you for giving to the Lord's work. You were with me, son, when you were a little boy at the high school. And you saw us over there. And you saw us build this, didn't you? And we do, and did we borrow money? We borrow no money, did we? How do you feel about borrowing money? I don't like it. You don't like it. You know why you don't like it? Why's that? Because I don't like it. <laughs> and you know who else don't like it? Where's your daddy? Wave at me, Dad. Daddy, you don't like it either, do you? He don't like it either. All right? Drive a used car. Do you have your own car? I do. What kind is it? It's a 04 Dodge Dakota. All right, little truck. Yes, little truck. Is it paid for? Yes. All right. Okay. Are you all right? Thank you for giving to the Lord's work. Crazy way to do an offering, isn't it? Aren't you glad to see a 17-year-old, though, that's going to help with the offering? And, and just, it's great. It's great. You know what offends me about you? What? Take a wild guess. My hair. Your hair! <laughs> Can't stand it! Just want to pull it! it! Makes me sick! Anyway, we need to have a prayer for the offering. Hey, thank you for giving to the Lord's work. If you can give cheerfully, we'll receive your gift. But if you can't give it cheerfully, then what would we say? Keep it. <laughs> He's been here a while, ain't he? Young man, yeah, we're not mean, trying to be mean, but we like it when we give our gifts to the Lord they are because we want to and we love him. Amen? Thank you for giving the Lord's work. Son, I love you, buddy. I'm proud of you. Senior this year? Yes, sir. Proud of you. Amen? Come on. Pray for us. For the offering. And just say, thank you, Lord, for the offering. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the offering. I pray that you uh, protect these people as they go home Nice. this week. Um, pray for the church. Help us. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You did it fine. You did it fine. Get off the get off the stage. Get out. Go. Get. Amen. Be seated. If you can if you can fix a car and you can play football, you can pray. Amen. Say. Come on. Come on. Thank you guys watching online right now. Would you write us a note if you're watching online this service? Would you write us a little note of encouragement? Maybe just thank the Lord for the, the people making it possible. But uh, just a word of encouragement. Let us know you're watching. But also a big thank you to you for giving. Many of you give. You give online. And, uh, man, I appreciate it. And uh, just thank you so much. But so glad you're with us this morning watching online. God bless.
Keep on the firing line when Miss Karen Simpson, you don't hear that song very often. Man, that is a tough, tough song. I would sing it, but I'd have to have my glasses, man. That's a lot of words, and they're real quick. But I used to sing that. I used to sing that with a quartet back in the day. Keep on the firing line. Guys, are y'all ready for the message or not? Okay, are y'all, y'all going to sit up and be with me today? Y'all going y'all gonna to sleep on me or not? Okay, I hope you're with me. Can you say I'm with you? There we go. There we go. Tough message today. If you're a rookie preacher, I wouldn't recommend you doing this one. Why? That may be better than somebody, but it's it's, it's complicated. Okay? I'm going to start this message out. It's solely on the Antichrist today. Who gives a message like that? You mean I come to church and I hear a message on the Antichrist. That's exactly what's going to happen today. I did the first hour. But here's what I want to do. I don't want to just give a message and let's go, I went to church. I, I'd like us to learn something. I'd like us to look at it from current times and current days that we're living through right now in our world. So it's a time to learn. Say that way. It's a time to what? Time to learn. So if you want to learn, we're here. And most people have never sat through a message just on the Antichrist. I would take a quick poll, but it doesn't matter. But now I have given them before because I do prophecy talks. But this is like a seminar, all right? So here I go. Y'all ready? I got slides and everything. Y'all ready or not? Okay. Are you ready, son? I'm going to say something to you. You're a big man. You barely fit in a seat. You know that? But I love you because you're a big man. You're strong. But you're you're a big guy. If you go to sleep, it's not like I can't see you. Do you hear me? Now, she's like a mother right here behind you. No, no, she'll pop you in the head. Will you hit him in the head? Matter of, I, know, I know Cody will hit him, right? I know, you know. You've been wanting to do it, ain't you? Here we go. Let's go to God's Word. The message today, imminent storm. It's a series on end-time events. Not going to repeat much at all because we don't have the time today. Today's message is Storm Surge. My title, Storm Surge. Now, we know hurricanes, but you know what can kill you, what can really kill you? And they make, they make a lot of it. Matter of fact, they build it up sometimes too big, I think. They tell you how high the water's going to be, going to wipe out everybody. You know what I'm saying? It scares everybody to death, and it just might barely get in the yard. You know what I'm saying? But, 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 if the storm surge really does happen, that's what will kill you. That's, that's the big, 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 big part of a storm. It's really bad. And so this message is called Storm Surge. It's really bad. It's the arrival of the Antichrist. In the last days, the arrival of the Antichrist. Before we get started, I've said it before. I'll say it again. We live in a time right now like has never been. Are y'all with me? You're listening or not? We live in a time like it's never been. We know in the last days you won't be able to buy, sell, or get gain without taking the mark of the beast or the mark of the Antichrist or the mark of this who's running things, who's leading our world system at that time. We know in our lifetime, it has happened in our lifetime, that that is very possible, very possible now. We used to think that to get a mark, you'd have to have like a piece of rice or something, a little small chip inserted. Everybody go and get their little chip. It's a chip. You don't have to have no chip. You already got the chip. Chips in your fingerprints, they're uniquely you. The chip is in your eye, your retina. Everybody has a unique retina. I'm not saying everybody will get the mark of the beast. I'm not saying that, but I am saying this. The technology's right there now. It, yes or no? And most of us don't do anything at all exclusively anymore with cash because they won't take it. You fly on a Legion airline, you're not going to book your ticket. It's a cash. You're not doing that. You get on the airline, you want a soda. They tell you right up, uh, we, all, we don't take any cash on this flight. We only take your credit card. That's our world. Yes or no, amen or oh me. 
And that's getting crazy. You can't go to fast food restaurants hardly without using the app. The what? They st- I went to a restaurant in the mountains. We in the mountains, fool. Quit acting like y'all technological and mess. But here they are at the counter. They at, here I am at the counter. They right there at the counter. The little kiosk things behind me. They at the counter. Here's the register. I walk up to the counter like a normal person. It's all right if you want to go to the app. I don't want to go to the app. I don't even know how to use the app or what am I putting on my burger on the app. So I go over here. Doesn't even look at me. You need to use the app. Are you telling? I nearly jumped over and choked him. How are you doing? Good, good to see you. Congrats on your little baby. Yeah. Listen to me. You can't even hardly order food sometime without an app. Is that true, yes or no? So I go to Wendy's the other day. This isn't a message. we got to get with the message. I go to Wendy's the other day. You know why I went? No, it was, yeah, I went to Wendy's the other day because you can get the biggie bag for $5. And, and they will give you a free small frosty. Oh, baby. So I'm traveling back, pull into the Wendy's. I go on the biggie bag with a free small frosty. You know what he said to me? Can't do it. What do you mean can't do it? It's on TV. You got to use your app. Do you know how hard it is not to hit somebody in the mouth? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing, but that is true. Though. I didn't get no free small frosty. That ain't right. That's prejudice. Anyway, but I mess with these people when I travel. You can only imagine. But my point is we are very much set for the numbering that's going to take place in the last days. Is that correct? That happened in our lifetime. It happened pretty quick, didn't it? So as we develop this message today in a future series a little bit more, we'll talk about some other things. But uh, feeling a little sick, I might have to sit down. Ooh, gets me sometimes. My health isn't the greatest, and so I do have little issues once in a while. But, especially when I get too excited. Can you all say calm down? Can you say it one more time? Thank you. Here we go. Here we go. There's something else. There's something else about the last days. The Bible says the earth will melt with a fervent heat. That this earth will be a set of fire. It will be burned. That's how it all ends. Okay? That technology is here today. It's called what? Nuclear what? Yeah, it's called nuclear weapons. Russia has the most, over 6,000. They have more than we have. Just a little bit. But they've got enough to destroy this planet over and over and over and over again. So do we. So do other nations. What I'm saying is that technology has happened in your lifetime. We have ships right now, right now, from Russia off the coast of the United States. Not just the coast of the United States, the coast of where? Florida. And never do I remember in my lifetime, I don't, now I might have as well as young, but I don't think so, but, but I never heard Putin talking about using his nuclear weapons against the United States. But now he says that. Usually when somebody says something they ain't been saying, you ought to take it seriously. So what I'm saying is they, the table is set for what we're seeing in the last days to happen. I'm not trying to scare you, but it's the truth. This prophecy that was written over 2,000 years ago about the marking of every person you won't be able to buy. That must have sounded cuckoo back then. Not cuckoo now. The earth being destroyed, melt with a fervent heat. How will that happen? Well, we know how it can happen now, yes or no. So, 
What about the Antichrist? Is that true? Let's check it out. Let's see what the Bible says. Now, that's the thing. This isn't just my opinion, guys. I'd rather not believe in the, that there's going to be an Antichrist, okay, between you and me. I'm going to say something else to you. In the last days, there'll be a falling away of the church. I just read the other day the United Methodist Church. The United Methodist Church is one of the largest denominations in the world. The United Methodist Church has split. They had a split. Now, we ain't talking about you went to a church and somebody didn't like somebody, so there was a split in the church. There has been a split in the denomination. It's split. It's the largest church denomination split since the Civil War. And that happened just a couple of months ago in your lifetime. You might say, well, why does that matter to me? You know what the split was over? It was over gender identification. It was over homosexuality. It was over, not. don't worry about what God's Word says. It's really about a woke agenda. And something's being pushed. People come to church to push this agenda. Y'all hear me or not say? I'm 62. I'm a solid Bible believer. Just You may as well not try to push your agenda on me. You hear me or not? Well, you're, you're not a nice person. I am a nice person. That's not going to work either. But I see, I, God, God's Word says, let God be true and every man a liar. So when we try to change God's Word, we're calling him a liar. Got it? Say. And so that denomination split, split. And we're seeing hundreds, if not thousands, of Methodist churches in America closing down, closing down, closing down, closing down. They were barely staying alive anyway. So in the last days, there will be a falling away of the church. Now, that's just the, that we just, I didn't pick on the Methodists just to pick on them. But the church that teaches the truth, that preaches Jesus, is few and far between. So, last days. I think we're set for a lot of this happening. Y'all all right so far? Have I made you mad, you Methodists out there? Thank you. I appreciate it. The Antichrist. We'll start out this message with a lot of stuff. Here we go. The Bible has a wealth of material on the Antichrist. Ray's going to push me. Most of the Antichrist information is found in Matthew, John, 2 Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd John, and the book of Revelation. There's 27 books in the New Testament. That's a lot of books in the New Testament to mention Antichrist. Okay? So for you that might say, Antichrist ain't in the Bible, here's the thing. When you don't read the Bible, you don't know what's in the Bible. And really, you don't deserve to have an opinion. Okay? If you're going to read the Bible and then tell me something ain't in the Bible, then let's go see if it is. But it's all through the Bible about the Antichrist. This isn't Gary just making up stuff at the Fellowship Church. Okay? Let's keep going. Antichrist. What does it mean? What does Antichrist mean? Anti means every time you put anti in front of something, it means to stand against it. It means you oppose to whatever you put anti in front of. If you anti-gas cars, you probably drive an electric one. You see what I'm saying? Or walking, okay? If you anti-something. So what does anti mean? Then, then on the basis of that definition, the Antichrist, say it with me, is one who is what? Against who? He's opposed to who? That's the basic definition of who the Antichrist is. He is against Christ. He is opposed to Christ. And this person will come. Let's check it out. Scripture. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with Him, Jesus, are called chosen and faithful. There will be a war that Antichrist leads against Christ. And I saw the beast. You're going to see this later. That is another name for the Antichrist. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. That's Jesus. And against his army. 
Take a wild guess where the battle of Armageddon takes place. Take a wild guess. It takes place where? Israel. It takes place in the Middle East. Why are people marching on campuses and in streets and all kinds of places now? They're, they're marching against Israel and America. They did this for years in other countries, but now it's come to America. This final battle will take place in America. Let's take a quick poll. How many believe an all-out battle, all-out hell could break loose from the Middle East and all the countries around Israel? An all-out, and coming up from Egypt, an all-out war could take place in the Middle East. Let's take a quick poll. How many believe that's possible? That's what I'm saying. Table set, baby. It ain't just a thought out there anymore. And I don't understand how 1,270 people can get raped, slaughtered, butchered, their feet cut off, and you somehow support these kind of people. You hear me or not say, you dress up like them. I think you should be arrested if you dress up like them. And masks should be outlawed. I'm going to just say, take off your mask. We don't know who's behind masks anymore. Is that true, yes or no? People wearing masks, going in and robbing places. I mean, this COVID mess has been a problem, yes or no? I'm just saying we live in crazy times. Is that true? covering the, themselves up with Hamas headdresses when they protest. It's unreal. I know I'm talking too much. Calm down, Gary. The Antichrist, who is he? Is he mentioned in the Bible? The Antichrist opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God or that's worship. So, that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We're going to see that scripture again in just a bit. So the Antichrist is all through the Bible in those different books in the Bible that I mentioned. Let's look at what John says specifically. The Apostle John and mentions the Antichrist how many times? Can you say it? The Apostle John mentions the Antichrist how many times? Let's look at him. Let's see what he says. The first one. He says the Antichrist will come. Little children, it's the last time, as you've heard. Antichrist shall what? Number two. Antichrist, many Antichrists are here. Are there many peoples, groups, leaders, religions that are against Christ? Yes or no? They're already here. Little children, it's the last time, as you have heard. Antichrist shall come. Even now, there are many Antichrist, whereby we know that it is the last time, last days. Number three, the Antichrist is a liar. This is what John said. Just learning real quick. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is what? Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten what? The Antichrist will deny that. He's not the only way. Do you think there's a lot of people that think right now that Jesus is not the way to heaven? Yes or no? Do you think there's a lot of people that believe that Jesus is a way, but there's a lot of ways? That's denying Christ. The message of the Antichrist says Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. That is the spirit of anti. Christ. So he will be against that Jesus came in the flesh as well. Number five, just real quick, the Antichrist denies that Jesus is coming again. Now I use the King James, and I love it. Very rarely do I find a, a word or something that's odd that, that I don't understand or you need to look at it closely. This is one of those verses. For many deceivers are in, entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Actually, when you look this up carefully in other translations, the word come is, is coming. It's coming. The idea is that when we deny that Jesus is coming, again, we are the spirit of, of Antichrist. He denies that Christ is coming again. Now, the mention of Christ coming is all through the New Testament as well. But the point is, if that's just point number five, he will, he will be against that Christ is coming again. So let's review real quick. What did John say? Are y'all going to sleep on me? I told you it's like a seminar. 
That's why I keep raising my voice. And, Ed, stop. Don't want you to go to sleep. Are you doing all right? You are the man that I'm going to be looking to to see if the audience is sleeping. Okay, here we go. What did we learn so far? Well, we learned this. Antichrist means against Christ, opposed to Christ. What have we learned? It's all through the New Testament. It's all through the New Testament, Antichrist. It's not something we just we wrote because you just one of them wild-eyed preacher guys. No. Throughout the Bible. Here's what we learned from John. He's against that Jesus Christ is the anointed one. For the way for you and I to be saved. The only way to God the Father. He's against the God the Father and God the Son relationship. Antichrist number three. He's against that Jesus came in the flesh to be the sacrifice for our sins. There's a lot of people that, I'm good, I'm good enough, I go to heaven, I'm a good guy. You can say what you want, but that's denying that you need Jesus. You hear me or not? I go to church. That's against Christ to think that's going to get you to heaven. Are we clear on that or not? You might say, that's too firm. I don't give a hoot. It's the Bible. Number four, Antichrist is against the prophecy that Jesus will return and rule as Messiah and Lord. Now, that's what the Apostle John had to say about it. Now, he had a lot more to say about it because he also wrote the book of Revelation. But we're just trying to lay the groundwork. So we're learning. Keep looking. Storm surge, the arrival of the Antichrist. Let's keep looking. Let's keep studying. There are many different names given to the Antichrist. So that's the thing. A lot of people say, well, where's the Antichrist in the Bible? Well, they, I have the name of Father, Daddy, Uncle, friend, pastor, overall cool guy, <laughs> funny man, loud guy, big mouth. I mean, I got lots of names. So does the Antichrist. There's a lot of names. Is it raining? Shh. You want to go home? You want to get home? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Look at his different names. When you therefore shall see, this is Jesus speaking, the abomination of desolation spoke of by Daniel the prophet. That's one of his names, abomination of desolation. Antichrist's name. Let's just go through this pretty quick. Keep going, Ray. Appreciate it. For there shall arise false Christ. That's another name for Antichrist. He is a, not a true Christ. He is a what? A false Christ. Here's a sad verse. Jesus was speaking to the Jewish people, Jewish leaders. He said, I'm come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you'll receive. So another name for the Antichrist is one who comes in his own name. And he will come in the last days, and he will be received by people. Just keep, just keep following with me. Keep, keep tracking with me. Another name, 2 Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin, that's another name for Antichrist, be revealed, and the son of perdition, that's another name for Antichrist. So is Antichrist in the Bible, yes or no, say? Is this too hard? Driving you up the wall, ain't I? And then, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, then shall that wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with his spirit by his mouth, and he'll destroy him with the brightness of his coming. So Paul described him as the what? The, the wicked one. That's not just talking about Satan. That's talking about the Antichrist specifically. Many names. And when they shall have finished their testimony, this name is mentioned a lot. The beast, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So he's referred to as the who? The, the beast. Amen. Okay? John refers to him as the beast. Revelation 13, 2, the beast, etc. So, are we learning anything? 
Is the Antichrist real? Is it in the Bible? What does it mean? What is his name? What are some of his views, his positions? We've learned a lot. The Antichrist will be great. We're going to drill down some more. You're here, it's raining. Let's go. Nobody will be as great as he is. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the who? The beast, which is another word for Antichrist. And they worship the beast of the Antichrist saying, Who is like the Antichrist? Who is able to make war with him? So he will be great. And nobody's going to be as great as he is. Keep looking. He will possess unbelievable intelligence. Let me ask you a question. How many are like me? And you feel like some really stupid people are making a lot of important decisions today. How many are like me? Anybody else like that? It's crazy. It's crazy to have Russian ships and submarines off the coast of Florida for the State Department to send out somebody in their 20s and to tell us it's not a problem. You don't need to worry about it. You don't seem to be the brightest person we could find. Y'all hear me or not? Say. But isn't there, doesn't there seem to be a lack of intelligence today in leadership? Is that true or false? I mean, golly, man, come on. I asked the first audience, I'm going to do a quick poll. How many right now you think you could do a better job running the country than what we're seeing right now? <laughs> I never could have done that poll years ago, but almost every hand goes up. It's crazy. He will possess unbelievable intelligence. People will be wanting somebody that's smart to fix all this crap. Y'all hear me? I'm just putting it out there for you. Here it is, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. It's the number of a man. His number is 666. So he will be a man. He will be a very intelligent, smart man. Are y'all with me? Okay, good. We're learning. Keep looking. He will be a great communicator. A great communicator. That puts a lot of people out right there. There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given to him to continue for three and a half years. Or that's 42 months. I just find that interesting. Even our terms that we have for presidents is about four years. But we know the last little part of the presidency is they're, they're lame ducks, so there's not a lot that can get done. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm just amazed at some of the numbers that I see in the Scripture, how it lines up with even our current world we live in today. Y'all hear me? So, hang in here with me. How many of you feel like you're about to, your head's about to explode? Okay, here we go. He will be attractive to people. Okay? Who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God or that's, that is worshipped so that he as God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God? All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He will, be, he will be somebody that people look to, that look up to, that will be attractive to people. He will draw people to himself. Got it? He will come across as what? Spiritual. Spiritual. The best politicians have always been the ones that can come across spiritual as well. Okay? He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. He'll come across as spiritual, but he speaks blasphemy. But a lot of, a lot of preachers speak blasphemy today. A lot of churches you'll go to, it's blasphemous to preach good works will get you to heaven. That's blasphemy. Did you hear me or not? To say that it's not the blood of Christ? That he's the only way to God the Father is blasphemy. Did y'all hear me or not say? If your church didn't teach that, they were teaching a form of blasphemy. I'm just ugly today, ain't I? Maybe we shouldn't listen to God's word. We should just coast. I don't think so. You're of God, little children, and you've overcome them. 
Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. He'll come across spiritual. That's not right. And we know it's not right because we have Christ. Keep looking. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world will hear them. So he will speak a language, great communicator, attractive, be very intelligent, but will also come across spiritual to speak that spiritual language. It can tickle the ears of people. Keep looking. He will be a phenomenal politician, the Antichrist, a phenomenal politician. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, of the beast, or the Antichrist that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. And I'm not going to get into it, but when you get in seven heads, ten horns, you're talking about politics and nations and things like that. Okay? But the bottom line is he'll be a phenomenal politician. Got it? Y'all cool so far? Now keep in mind, this isn't, we're not talking about American politics here. We're talking about the world the world. We haven't really seen that yet. But we are seeing America slide. Is that true? We're seeing America slip. I think the table is getting set for somebody other than an American president to take leadership, to come on the world stage. The UN ain't cutting it, are they? And the NATO leader, not necessarily. But this is just an idea of what is going to happen. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree. And they will give their kingdom unto the beast, unto the Antichrist, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. I personally, I say way too much, but I can't believe the many peace treaties that Israel has made with terrorists. They keep giving and giving and giving. And they're just a tiny little spot of land over there in the Middle East. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of land. And they give up this and they give up that. Guys, we, we see people giving up stuff all the time. Look at the freedoms we've given up in this country of late. Y'all hear me or not? You think all of us would agree that if you come to this country... Great, we want that, but come in legally. Is that too much to ask, yes or no? Is that too, we ought to thank the Lord. Is that too much to ask? You know what I mean? It's just, so many things, so many things are happening, and it's happening rapidly. And we're seeing a decline, not just in our country, but in the world. The Antichrist will be great. He will be a force to be reckoned with. Okay? A force to be reckoned with. And they worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast. We saw this scripture already. And they said, who's like him? Who's able to make war with him? So the Antichrist will rise to power. Not saying countries aren't going to be involved. Give him this kind of power, probably. But he'll be a force to be reckoned with. Talking about the Antichrist. Believe it or not, we're not that far to go. How you doing? Good. Great. Great. Here we go. I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. That's war against Christ and against his army. And that battle will take place in Israel, I said it before, in the battle of Armageddon. And if you think of a big globe, a big globe, 2,000 years ago, the war of the ages will come down to where? Israel and the Middle East. If we had to pick a place today, you know, we're just supplying weapons to Ukraine. You know that, right? Now we're supplying weapons that can kill, go deeper and kill Russians. I'm going to use a word that's really pissed Putin off. Okay? But now we're not fighting the war. We just give them stuff. We can say whatever. We're fighting the war. Okay? Y'all hear me or not say? The bottom line is, if you take America out of the picture... Everything that's happening is over there. It's over there. Russia, Ukraine. If you get a map out and look, even China, Egypt, Africa, when you see all this and you look at Israel, it's not that far away. It's not like we're way over here. See, we're way over here. But when you put all the battles that are going on and you start to look at them, they're all over there. 
The stage is being set for a battle like this. The UN, almost all nations are against Israel. Almost all of them. A battle is set. Do I, am I saying this is happening? Right? I'm not saying it's happening right away. I'm just saying it really blows my mind. Y'all hear me or not? Okay, keep looking. We're almost done. Some of your eyes are glazing over. <laughs> Gary especially, your eyes are glazing. Yes. So the Antichrist will be a great talker. He will be a blasphemer. He will be a great leader. But he will be wicked and he will be lawless. The Antichrist. That's the picture we see. Now here's the question. Here's the question of all the questions. Here it is. Pop it up. When will he come to full power? Now we could quit right now. Do you want me to just talk about that for a second? Yeah, I think we're going to talk about it. I wasn't going to listen to you anyway. When will he come to full power? When will he come to full power? You know what I thought I'd do? And I'm going to just do it with you right quick. I want to take the chapter of 2 Thessalonians. Pop it up, Ray. And I just want to read through there and just make a few comments. Like we're having a Bible study, but not long. Now we beseech you, brethren, Apostle Paul writing, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in your mind or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by this letter from us, as that the day of the Lord is at hand. Watch very carefully now. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin, or the Antichrist, be revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God. And guess where that's located? That will be Jerusalem. Showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, Paul speaking, I told you these things. I spoke to you about this already. But this is the hard scripture, and I want you to try to wrap your head around it. Ready? King James language is a little bit different. I'm going to try to explain it. And now ye know not what withholds that he might be revealed in his time. Now, I'd like to just talk about that scripture right quick. When Christ was going to the cross, he said, I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be killed. Third day, I'll rise again. And then he said this, but I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you the blank, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. The word is paraclete. God, the Holy Spirit, who will come alongside you. Well, did that happen? Well, of course it happened. We see the disciples distraught. They were on the run. They were floundering. But when they were in Jerusalem, they were in the upper room. He told them, don't leave Jerusalem. They did, but they came back, obviously. They're in the upper room. And the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Y'all remember this? And then, Acts 2, you see the apostle Peter, who just before was fearing for his life. He had been a denier of Christ. We see Peter full of the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, and he starts preaching. Remember? And thousands get saved, and the church is born. And the apostles, all of them, gave their life for Christ. And they never looked back because the Holy Spirit came. And filled them. Why am I telling you that? That won't always be the case. What we know now won't always exist. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word won't pass away. The earth shall melt with a fervent heat. 
how is all that going to happen if the Holy Spirit is here doing His work? Well, He won't always be doing that. Just as He came, He will leave. He will pull back. Have, you, have I lost you on that? That's sort of like a crazy teaching some people think, but it's not crazy. Guys, I'm telling you, I see something happening now. I, I just do. It could be I'm getting old. It could be I'm just setting my ways. I don't know. But it seems like from churches not teaching the word to major splits, the biggest one since the Civil War, to, to honestly, the Democratic Party. I'll just get a little political. Guys, back in the day, back in the day, if you were for abortion, you were for rape or incest or the health of the mother, or, or it might have been you're for abortion, but it was not like up to nine months. What have we done? We're killing kids and we're and we're marching on it. It'll be on the ballot in Florida. I just hate it when politics gets involved in the killing of children. Did you hear what I just said? I'm just saying it seems like there's a pulling back. We can see it in our morals. We can see it in kids. We can see it all over. We can see it in marriage. We can see it all over. Has the Holy Spirit started the pullback? Is that why we're seeing the falling away? I don't know. Bible teaches this. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Crazy scripture though. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. That scripture is talking about the Holy Spirit. Only he, the Holy Spirit, who now lets these things happen. One day he's going to be taken out of the way. Look at the next verse. And then, and then shall the wicked one, the Antichrist, be revealed. Whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's a little bit later. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, lying wonders. Did you just see that, what I just showed you or not? I'm just trying to be honest, trying to be a guy up here on stage doing the best I can. It's complicated stuff. Verse 10, Antichrist, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. When, when the Holy Spirit came, Jesus said, He will lead you into all what? Truth. So we've had the chance, we still have the chance to put our faith in Christ. But look at that scripture. People will be deceived. People will perish because, say it with me, they received not, say it with me, the love of the, that they might be what? That's why every single Sunday I push every single Sunday for you to get saved. I'm a crazy person, ain't I? You could die before you come back here. Christ could come, but I don't know. I don't know what all is going to happen. But I know this, when you know the truth and you're not accepting the truth, you're in danger. Put your faith in Christ. I know this hasn't been an easy message for some of you, but you'll get over it. Look at verse 11. <laughs> Last days. Look at this verse. Tell me you think of this is happening recently. For this cause God shall send them strong what? Does it seem like people are delusional or is it just me? It just seems like people are just delusional. That they should believe a what? There's a lot of lies people believe. I ain't got all day to go over them. That they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but they had pleasure in what? And unrighteousness. Now I gotta quit. We're done. It was a long message. Gotta stop. Here we go. Here we go. Ray, just push me. We're gonna get through this fast. 
we hope. Here's the good news. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slack. Just say this part with me. But he is what? Long-suffering to who? And he's not what? Willing that any should what? But wait a minute. Look at this. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This will happen. You're crazy. It will happen. Could it happen? Absolutely. Could it happen in our lifetime? Absolutely. This isn't made up crazy stuff. It's reality. So when will he become so popular and revered? When will he become so popular, the Antichrist? When chaotic world conditions call for leadership. Do you think the world is getting close to calling for some leadership? Is there a lot of chaos? Yes or no? Absolutely. When will he become so popular? We had this scripture. You hear wars, rumors of wars, be not trouble. These things must happen. Keep going. You're fine. When his great charisma and ability energized by Satan gains him this recognition. This is when he will come onto the stage. We've given that scripture before. His powers after Satan. When he brings what? Say this one with me. When he brings what? To where? Does it need it? Has it needed it for a while? But is it worse now? Oh, yeah. This is when he comes on the scene. Is that happening in your lifetime? <laughs> sure it is. Look at it. Again, this scripture, and I close with this one. Jesus said, I'm come in my Father's name and you don't receive me. That's a sad, sad verse. He said, another shall come in his own name and him you'll receive to your own damnation, to your own peril. Pretty sad, huh? The Antichrist. When will he come? When will he be on the scene? Well, I gave you a message. Storm surge. I think you know how I feel. Amen? Let's thank the Lord for his word, even though it won't purdy. I'm sorry it won't purdy. It won't purdy. What am I supposed to do? Let's stand up. Come on, let's get together. Amen. Come on. Woo! How many's head? Now you feel like it's exploding. A little bit, a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. I get you guys. They tell you if you're a church pastor, don't preach this. Don't preach this. It's too heavy. Give a seminar on it. But I'm just stupid enough to do it. Stubborn enough. Amen? Did we have some Bible today? Say. I think we had some Bible today at the Fellowship Church. Yes or no? Amen. Come on. Okay, so there you go. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for a good time in your word. Thank you for a time that, thank you for the people. They listened to me. Lord, it was comfortable for me to teach your word here today. And that's a big deal to me. That's a big deal. I don't want to talk to somebody that won't talk to me. And listen. And I appreciate you giving me the folks that we have here. Give us ears to hear. Give us a heart and, and a spirit that wants to learn. Lord, we know that no man knows the day nor hour. Not even the Son of Man knows. The angels don't know. Only you know. So, Lord, I pray you'll take this word. I pray you'll help us apply it to our heart. And, Lord, you know my heart. You know my heart. And I'm the biggest sinner I know. I've got my own problems. So I don't, I don't preach this from a place of I'm smarter than you or better than you or know everything. And, Lord, you know that about me. I ain't doing that. And, Lord, my heart is that these people will get saved. My heart is that these people will be followers of you, Jesus. That's my heart. I don't know about all this other stuff. But if I can present something to make them think, to shake them a little, to get them to come to you, Lord, then that's what I want to do. So, Lord, would you do that today? 
Would you help none leave lost today? Not one, not one. We don't want one to perish today that's in this room or online or on the radio. Would you humble us today, Lord? Holy Spirit, you are here. Would you speak to that heart today that's just lying to himself or herself? thinking that good works are going to church is going to get them to heaven. Would you help them see the truth today? That they must be born again. They must put their faith in you, Jesus Christ. Would you touch them today, Lord, like you did my drunk mama years ago and me? Would you bring us to truth today? today? In Jesus' name. With heads bowed, I'd like to lead you in a prayer today where you can put your faith in Christ. The Bible says, if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus, if you'll believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. It did not say your good works. It did not say church attendance. It says belief in Jesus Christ. Can I lead you in a prayer where you'll do that? It might be tough. You're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to realize you were wrong. It's okay. It's okay. It's good. God's right. I'm wrong. That's not a problem. That's good. Pray with me, would you? Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. And Jesus, I know I can't save myself, and some church can't do it either. So I humble myself, and I put my faith in you, Jesus Christ. I believe you are God's only son. I totally disagree with the Antichrist. You did come in the flesh, and you died on a cross, and you rose from the dead, and you love me. And I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And I will never perish because my faith is is in you in Jesus name with heads bowed how many raise a hand I'm not going to bother you so we'll see how many said would say I said that prayer Pastor Garrett I meant that from the bottom of my heart I I nailed that I flat nailed that today that's a good many few of you praise the Lord Lord thank you for a good time in the word thank you for giving me strength to get through two times of this I appreciate it (laughs) And just bless us as we go our way. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You didn't have to tell us any of this stuff, but you put it in a book. And I thank you for that book in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's thank the Lord one more time. Y'all did great. You did pretty good. Did pretty good. You can tell people now, now you've gone through an Antichrist seminar. (laughs) Golly. Lord help you. Hey, sweetie. God bless you. Keep smiling.